looking at the short yardage uh, plays last week. Uh, what do y'all got to do to get uh, get those conversions going? Yeah, I think we got to do a, a better job across the board, you know, of uh, not allowing penetration in the middle um, and, you know, getting some better push and then, you know, trying to find ways to, you know, get us in space, uh, you know, get guys opportunities to, to get that one yard. And so that's one of the things we always look at, you know, what can we do better as players? What can we do better schematically? Um, and where can we improve and try and be better this week? And just, uh, just the uh, uh, emotional part of that, just when you pick those up, aren't those uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, kind of injections for the team? Yeah, for sure. You know, there, there's, it's a game of momentum. And, uh, you know, when you get your opportunities, um, your fourth down calls, fourth and one, you know, where a coach giving you confidence to go for it, you got a chance to extend drives, get points on the board, and um, you got to take advantage of those. Uh, they're huge swings. And then the third one, you know, particularly late in that game, um, you know, it's a tight ball game, and that the momentum was kind of on our side, so you got to keep it there. And, you know, those are things we've got to correct and, and do better as we move forward if we want to be the football team we can be. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think that's got to be the mindset every week. That's that's the the mindset that guys need to have is that, you know, this is the most important game we're ever going to play. Uh, and if we can get back to having guys every every week, you know, with that with that same mindset of of the same level of intensity and preparation, and um, I think it's gotten better. I think we you know have a long way to go, but um, that's the kind of mindset we have to have every week and and have that intensity and urgency to go out there and get the job done and. Um, you know, that's something that I'm going to try and provide all week. Chris, did you know that you broke, that you broke the record for the most passing yards all time in your 14 seasons when you, when you did it or after the game at all? Uh, not until I was asked a question. And so, uh, no, that's, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, obviously I'm, I'm proud of that. And, you know, it's, um, I've, I've been fortunate to stay healthy and, you know, to, to play with a lot of good players. And so it brings a lot of those memories back into it. But when you're playing, uh, that's the furthest thing from your mind. Yeah, you got two quick conversions that you scored off the long read. People were calling you like an athlete on Twitter and you like meet you over someone. What was, what was that like for you? Obviously something that you don't typically. Yeah, I mean, it was two yards. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I felt good about that, but uh, I think you know, keeping things in perspective is uh, is important. But you know, I I feel like I've always moved better than you know than people think, and um, it's not great, but it's good enough. And uh, you know, I, I feel comfortable doing those kind of things. Mike, sorry, I'm still just recovering from the moving better than people think. <laughs> uh, when you were talking about you know, in short yardage up the middle, and when the Giants seem to really like to play up the middle, like how did that change? Yeah, that, I mean, that's something, you, you know, our coaching staff does a great job of looking at that during the week of saying, you know, schematically, do we think, um, you know, these calls are, are, are going to work? I think from the player's perspective, you know, your mindset always has to be regardless of what the call is, you got to make it work. You know, you got to make the plays come to life. And we all have to execute our, our jobs as best we can. Um, it might not be ideal situations all the time. Uh, a lot of times you're outnumbered uh, in those situations and it comes down to, you know, be very precise with your technique and, um, you know, all 11 guys playing together to try and increase one gap. Um, you know, so we'll certainly take a look at schematically what we need to do, but at the same time, you know, I think for the player side of it, you got to take that as a challenge to go make the play. And uh, kind of following Chris's question a little bit, is part of why you don't necessarily pay attention to the 13 and 14 is because it only seems so fleeting in today's NFL because, like, I mean, you've held so many days and then, yeah, I mean, I, I also, you know, I, I, I really believe that if you, you're th spending your time thinking about those kind of things, um, you, you know, you're not spending your time thinking about the right stuff. Really, all that matters is, um, you know, having the right mindset for what we need to do this week and, and what it takes to be at my very best this week. 
Uh, and I've always thought that if you keep that mindset, those other things that come along with it kind of stack themselves up by themselves. And so I, I've never had that mindset to, to think of those kind of things. Steve? Yeah, how do you, how do you see uh, Corbell's, uh, uh, I guess, role evolving here? And what are the possibilities of the guy who's that person? Yeah, I think, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, him and Mike are our running backs. And, uh, you know, we're, we're – Really comfortable putting both those guys back there, um, having them run, you know, every scheme that we have. I think we're really comfortable moving both of them out there and, and throwing the ball in the passing game, too. I think they, they both have that kind of skill set. Um, but I also think, you know, you look at how Tampa tried to kick around some of what CP was doing last week, and that helps us as a football team. So uh, he's kind of an old school player. You know, he, he can kind of do a little bit of everything. He's got great speed. Uh, he's really physical. I feel like he plays the game the right way, tough, hard-nosed. He's the kind of guy you want to be around. And um, I think he, you know, he'd fit in good with any team, and, and I'm really happy that he's here. You come to grips with handing the ball off to an end number 84? I still feel like it's Roddy White sometimes when I'm handing it <laughs> off. You know, like this is, this is a little strange. He's got the dreads coming out the back too, so, you know, you're like do a double take. But oddly enough, they both kind of play the game with the same passion, too. Roddy was, you know, very much that way. Uh, great energy, great passion, tough. Um, you know, but if you produce, who, who cares what number you're wearing when you hand it off to him? Um, when you're in the situation where you put in the, when you put in the position to run, what is just your whole thought process when everything is breaking down you have that lane? Yeah, just go. You know, just uh, go get what you can get. And, um, you know, a lot of the times it's in, you know, third down situations. Uh, so, you, you know, you have that kind of internal uh, feel of what the down and distance is. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you think you got six or seven yards, you really only got four. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things you're trying to get every inch you can and, uh, and, and try and move the chains. And um, I think that's just... You know, I, I was actually a triple option quarterback in high school. So uh, if you really go back, I, I, I ran the ball a lot more in high school than I threw it. And so, you know, I've, I've been doing that at various different levels, but uh, my entire life. Well, I mean, it's funny you just segue to this question. Um, with just the RPOs, the evolution of the game, do you think you'll see yourself running more? I don't know if it'll be more, but, um, you know, there's certainly parts that we do within the passing game, too. Uh, where it's, you know, your run pass options, you know, the true zone read stuff. Uh, and that's for Art to draw up. You can ask him about those questions, but, um, you know, maybe here and there. Josh, a follow-up on Cordero Patterson. Obviously, at this level, you're dealing with the elite of the elite. Where does he rank in terms of pure athleticism with guys you play with? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to compare because, you know, so many guys uh, – skill sets apply to their positions, you know, and, um, but he's, you know, he's up there. I mean, no question for his size, for how big he is too. I mean, you guys have seen him. He's, he's a big dude. And, um, you know, his speed, I mean, was, he made a great catch on the touchdown too. He's got great hands, um, really good vision, really good instinct. Uh, I think all those things he's, you know, He's a complete football player and uh, has all the, the kind of skills that you would want from, from a guy doing that, you know, job responsibility for us. Justin? Matt, you said in, in Tampa after the game, you know, you can throw out that 0-2, making the playoffs thing, there's 17 games, and there's a ton of time left. What are the things about this team that make you feel like you can play your way back into the mix? Well, I think, you know, I think the, the effort, the competitiveness, um, you know, I, I think those are things uh, that you can hang your hat on. Um, and, and I thought some of that was really good. I think it needs to be more consistent. Um, I think when you look at some of the execution that we've had at certain times throughout games has been very good, uh, but it needs to be more consistent. So I think, you know, you draw the positives from, from our start, some of the good things that we've done. And, you know, if you can do it once, you can do it again. And, and you have to hammer home, you know, to, to our young players that, it's not going to require, you know, anything extraordinary. It's just going to require lots of really ordinary plays that you do really well uh, consistently for four quarters. And so, um, 
you know, that's, that's kind of the message that I'm, I'm trying to hammer home to our guys. It's, it's just you have to do your job really well, play after play after play. Are you seeing more of that consistency? I mean, we use the term growing pains and things a lot like that. Do you kind of have to go through these moments of inconsistency when you have a, a younger roster than we've seen around here in the past? Yeah, I, th I, I think you do when you have young players, but you also got to clip off wins along the way. And so, um, you know, it's it's you, you live through some of those things when you're playing with young guys. You know, I, I know that firsthand, being that guy, um, that there's a lot of improvement that you have to make, but you also have to find ways to get the job done regardless. And so, um, you know, we can we can harp on the positives, try and be more consistent, but we got to find ways to win. I don't know where, I, I don't know where that's from, but I, I feel like that's something I've I've had that mindset for a long time. Um, you know, there, there's there's no reason to believe that, that that isn't you know the the standard for you. You know, your very best play should be the standard for for what you go out there and do. And so, um, I don't know where it came from, but I've kind of used that for a long time. Um, and Arthur Smith talked a lot about you know it was a perfect. Well, I, I think he just played within the scheme. You know, I, I think, you know, that's one of the messages I was kind of referencing earlier is that you don't have to be a hero every snap. You just have to be detailed and, um, and, and, and you know, do what you're coached and asked to do. And I thought he did a better job of that for sure. Um, but all of us have to do that. You know, it's not just him. All of us have to kind of, you know, find out exactly what we're being asked to do and, and, and try and execute it as best we can. And um, were you really working on it? They're still conditioning us, yeah. So we're, we're, we're working, yeah. I mean, do you feel like that's a difference at all in this year compared to last year for you? I mean, I, I've had touchdown runs before. So uh, I, I don't know if I'm any faster, but I, I certainly don't feel like I've lost anything. You know, I still feel like I can go out there and move the same way. Um, but I do believe in the conditioning portion of it. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things – Arthur has talked about from the start is is being you know one of the best conditioned teams in the league and um, I think that's something we need to continue to buy in and, and you know sometimes it's easy when you're nicked up and as you're going through the year for that to kind of slide by the wayside but I, I really do believe that if we can continue to focus on it that's going to pay dividends for us down the road. Mike, yeah, this is a little bit out there maybe, but Elon Manning's getting a ring of honor and Joe Dumas on Sunday. Do you pay attention to that? No, I mean, you don't worry about those kind of things. They, they have no impact on, you know, the, the play on the field. Um, I'm happy for Eli. Eli's a friend and, and a guy that I've known for a long time, um, was a competitor for a long time. And so, you know, uh, he deserves it. One of the most cl clutch players um, in critical situations. And uh, I'm happy for him and his family. That's going to happen this week. But that doesn't change, you know, what's going to happen on the field. Earlier you mentioned that they're talking to the young guys about things that we're doing well and continuing to do those things. What are some of the things that you feel like y'all have done well through the first two weeks that you want to continue to do this weekend? Yeah, I think, you know, I think first down and second down, uh, you know, efficiency has been good for us. Um, and it was different in both games. I think in the first half, the Philly game, you know, I think there was really good first down and second down efficiency in the run game. Uh, and it was tough sledding, um, you know, in the Tampa game. But I thought the first down and second down, efficiency in the past game was really good, keeping ourselves on schedule. Uh, so, you know, I think that's a recipe for success moving forward. I think you want to stay, you know, making first downs on first and second down and keeping yourself in, in third and shorts. Um, you know, the percentages are much higher uh, of, of extended drives converting third downs when you're at third and five or less. And so um, I think that's been pretty good so far this year. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think it's a group that plays hard. They're big up front, you know, big defensive front four. Um, you know, I think the linebackers are savvy, veteran guys. They've got some people in the secondary that we've played against in our past and know well. Um, 
and, and I think they play hard. They play physical. And so uh, we definitely, you know, have to have our mindset right, have a great week of preparation, you know, and make sure that we're as tight as a unit as we can be when we get up there and we're ready to go Sunday. Uh, Matt, there's been a lot of conversations about guard play, you know, in the first couple of games about made the field and his development. Um, what have you seen from Chris Lindstrom as far as what, how he's been playing? Yeah, I think Chris is doing a good job. You know, I think, uh, you know, you forget sometimes because he's a he's a really consistent player for us, but you forget he's still a young player as well and, um, you know, has a lot of growth and development to go through. And, you know, I think I see more so than anything just, you know, the confidence that, that he has, um, you know, a belief in himself and, and what he can do and, you know, stepping into more of a leadership role uh, in that room, you know, being one of the more veteran guys, which – you know, that group's young, um, and, and so uh, I've been impressed with Chris from that standpoint. But in terms of his play, Chris always plays with great effort. He's extremely athletic, you know, can, can get off combination box and into the second level as good as anybody. Um, and we need that, you know, to continue from him. Is that what they teach all at Boston College? Well, I mean, I didn't want to say it <laughs> <laughs> since you brought it up. <laughs> yeah, they uh, – they put out some pretty good offensive linemen from Boston College, and uh, Chris is, you know, one of one of the guys in a long line of really good players that uh, have come out at, at the offensive line group. Do you have anything else? Uh, no, he asked my question on the joint. That's all good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.